Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So when I started 18 months ago, I told my first crowd in Wisconsin that we're going to come back here someday and we are going to say Merry Christmas again. Merry Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year, but Merry Christmas. And I'm here today for one main reason, to say thank you to the people of Wisconsin, credible people. And you know, a wonderful thing, because now after millions and millions of dollars were wasted and countless hours were spent, the recount vote has come back. You know, I called it a scam, but I won't say that because we want to be nice, okay? So I refuse to say it was a scam tonight, all right? This way they can't report that I said it. And after all of this money was spent by the Democrats, believe me, they were behind it, okay? And the Green Party, wonderful party. She got less than 1%, but she thought she was going to catch us. All that money, all that time, all that effort, we added, we got 131 votes more than we had before. I think it was worth it. Well, they spent three and a half million, four million dollars for 131 votes. That's okay. Tells you how important every single vote in America is, right? We won Wisconsin for the first time since 1984, 32 years ago. You went out and you pounded the pavement, organized your fellow citizens, and propelled to victory a grassroots movement the likes of which the world has never seen before. Now, all over the world they're talking about this, and they're now comparing what is happening in other places, faraway places, with what happened here. So, and Brexit now is sort of a small version of what we did. Just, But I predicted Brexit. And when I predicted Brexit, they all said, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And when it happened, they refused to acknowledge that I predicted it, which is standard. I will never forget you, and I will never, ever stop fighting for you. Okay? Never. I'm honored to be here tonight with our incredible Wisconsin leadership team. Sheriff David Clark, where are these people? Sheriff Clark. Senator Ron Johnson, come from behind. He came from behind. Governor Scott Walker, where's Scott? Oh, man. He was tough. He was great. He's a great governor. He's a great, he really is. He's a great person and he's a great governor. And I went against him for a while and I want to tell you, he was tough. So now it's going to be your turn very soon. I don't know. You and Pence are going to have to fight it out. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. Appreciate it. Speaker Paul Ryan, I've really come to a, oh no, I've come to appreciate him. Speaker Paul Ryan, where's the Speaker? Where is he? he has been, I'll tell you, he has been terrific. And you know, honestly, he's like a fine wine. Every day goes by, I get to appreciate his genius more and more. Now, if he ever goes against me, I'm not going to say that, okay? He's a great guy, and we have some amazing things in store. And we're going to work on taxes. We're going to work on Obamacare. We're going to work on things 
and he's going to lead the way. So thank you. Oh, we're going to work on the wall, Paul. Well, it's true. Somebody said, look at these guys. You think we're playing games, right? Somebody said the other day, well, now that Trump won, he's really not going to build the wall. I said, what are you? We're going to build the wall, okay? Believe me. We're going to build the wall. You have to. Got to stop the drugs from coming in, and the wall's going to be a big, big factor. And I also want to thank a man who is another star from your territories. There's some very good water in this state. Chief of Staff Rights Priebus. Fantastic guy. Fantastic guy. He's done an incredible job. And now he's a superstar. You know, I thought he was a superstar, but you got to win to be a superstar, right? You got to win. I said, Reince, you are a superstar, but we got to win first before I really go crazy. And we won, so now you're the superstar that we said. Together, we're going to Washington. Whoop. Whoop. Are you okay? Do we have a doctor in the house, please? Doctor in the house? Doctor in the house. Okay. Good. We love this lady. Doctor in the house. Thank you. We love this lady. We love everybody. We love everybody. That woman who I've seen before is terrific. Make sure she's perfect. Make sure she's okay. Okay, take your time. We have time, right? We have time. Together, we're going to make Washington answer to the people once again. We're going to put the government to work for you, first time in a long time. The whole world is recognizing our movement. It's because of you. And by the way, again, a movement that they've never seen before. They've never knew. They didn't know what hit them. They didn't know what happened. And it's because of you that we, all of us, were just honored with the Time Magazine Person of the Year. And just a little while ago, it was announced that we were also honored with the Financial Times Person of the Year. So that's great. See, in the old days, it was called the Man of the Year, right? Now they call it the... Okay, so let me do this. And we have a lot of women here. I got to do it. Okay, do you mind? Would you prefer... I'll go Person of the Year, then Man of the Year. Person of the Year, Man of the Year. Okay. What should it be? I'm doing this for all of your politicians over here. Not that we're going to change at this point. Would you rather see Person of the Year? Man of the Year. Yeah. These guys are so politically correct. <laughs> now, so far I've done that three times, and I'll tell you what, person of the year is not doing well. I also want to give a very special thanks to all of our great veterans that are here, service members, military family. By the way, the military and law enforcement I don't know what our numbers were, but I know they were record-setting high. So to all of those veterans and service people and law enforcement people, I want to thank you because you are special people, special, special people. Because the fact is that America's men and women in uniform are the finest and bravest the world has ever known. We're going through something very, very difficult 
in the world and even in our country, the world has ever known. So to all of you who have worn the uniform, I say to you now, on behalf of a very grateful nation, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're in your debt, and we will never let you down. We will honor your service and sacrifice. And that begins with defending and respecting the American flag. And we don't like seeing people burning our American flag, okay? We don't like it. And we're going to take a look at that, okay, folks? All right? We're going to take a look at that. We'll all take a look at that together. One man who understands the meaning of service is somebody that's become unbelievably popular because he's tough, he's strong, and he doesn't lose. General Mad Dog Mattis, right? He is a popular guy because of his record. You ever hear of somebody named Vince Lombardi? You've never heard of Vince Lombardi. Never. He was popular, too, because he wins. We like people that win. We want to start winning again. Our country's going to start winning again, okay? Would anybody like to keep it the way it is? I don't think. We're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win a lot. We're going to win so much, you're going to go to Paul Ryan. You're going to go, Mr. Speaker, please, please. We can't stand winning this much. We can't take it. And he's going to come to see me and he's going to, Mr. President, the people in Wisconsin are tired of winning so much. You're winning with health care. We're winning on the border. We're winning with ISIS because we are going to get ISIS out. We're winning all over, Mr. President. They just can't take it anymore. I say, Paul, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have to go back and tell them we're going to keep winning and winning and winning, whether they like it or not. <laughs> Last week, I formally announced my plans to nominate General Mattis as your new Secretary of Defense. And I believe we're in the process of putting together one of the great cabinets Certainly a cabinet with the highest IQ that anybody has ever. I mean, these, these are seriously great people. Did you see today the president of Goldman Sachs? This is the president of Red Big Stuff. And we have General Kelly. We have incredible people. Uh, Dr. Ben Carson, great guy. I think it's going to be one of the great cabinets ever ever, ever. Leaders and titans of industry, art, sports, science, are reaching out and want to find ways to help. I mean, today, as an example, in my office, the great Jim Brown, right? Jim Brown. Bill Gates. Anna Winter. Kanye. That's right. right I like Kanye. Ray Lewis. We've had so many people, they come up and they want to be a part of what we're doing, and we want to use everybody. We want to use all of the brain power because we're going to bring us back. We're going to be not only great, we're going to be greater than ever before. You watch. You watch. And tomorrow, coming up to the office, the true giants of Silicon Valley. We're going to talk about how to grow jobs. We're going to talk about how they can stay on top. We're going to talk about a lot of great things, but the real giants are coming up tomorrow, so it's going to be great. Today, I announced my plans to nominate Rex Tillerson, right? The chief executive officer and chairman of ExxonMobil to be the next secretary of state. Rex is one of the greatest and most skilled global business leaders of our time, made some of the greatest deals 
ever made in the oil industry or any industry. A great diplomat, a strong man, a tough man, a man who's already earned an avalanche of endorsements and growing praise from our nation's top leaders, including Condoleezza Rice, Bob Gates, James Baker, Dick Cheney, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, and so many more. And people are looking at this resume, and honestly, they've never seen a resume like this before. Rex will be a fierce advocate for America's interests around the world and has the insights and talents necessary to help reverse years of foreign policy blunders and disasters. Blunders and disasters. Very excited about Rex. And, you know, Rex is friendly with many of the leaders in the world that we don't get along with. And some people don't like that. They don't want him to be friendly. That's why I'm doing the deal with Rex, because I like what this is all about. And we're going to have somebody that's going to be very special. America has been caught in a cycle of failed interventions that have weakened our security and undermined totally our stability. We've spent Six trillion dollars in the Middle East. Six trillion dollars. You know what that is? We could have rebuilt our country three times. And yet the situation today is far worse than when we started 15 years ago. Far worse. It's not even a contest. It's a mess. The cost of both dollars and lives has been immense. We need a new direction. We need a new direction. Americans' foreign policy has lacked a clear vision, a clear goal, and a clear understanding of the threats, and the threats are immense. Instead of jumping recklessly from one intervention to another, my administration will build a long-term strategy for stability, prosperity, peace, and rebuilding our own country, folks. We're going to rebuild our country. We need it. That strategy will be guided by our values, our principles, and our patriotism. We will seek goodwill among nations, a strengthening of vital alliances, and the pursuit of shared goals when interests align. And we will not be taken advantage of by other countries. We will not be. No more. No more. We'll get along great with other countries. We will not be taken advantage of. Our goal is not to build new nations in far-off lands that most of you have never even heard of, but to crush ISIS, we have no choice, and to defeat radical Islamic terrorism. My administration, with the help of Paul and Ron and everybody, We'll also rebuild our badly depleted military and take care of our great veterans the way they should have been taken care of for a long time. We are building up this great military power in the hope that we never have to use it. We believe strongly in peace through strength. Our military is going to be modern and powerful again, believe me. But to be a strong nation, we must also be a rich nation. Doesn't sound so nice. A woman came up to me. She said, Mr. Trump, I loved your speech, but I don't like when you say rich nation. I said, ma'am, you're a fabulous woman. But if we're not going to be a rich nation, we can't rebuild our military. We can't take care of all of the problems we have, including our medical problems. So we're going to be a rich nation. And after I spoke to her for a few minutes, she was okay. She was okay. My administration will be focused on three very important words. Jobs, jobs, jobs.